Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Listen, you don't have to be Tony Stark to get some high-tech mapping and navigation on your sled. Even if you got an older sled like I do. So if you stick around, I'll show you how I did it right now. All right guys, obviously we don't have Iron Man heads up displays on our snowmobile helmets yet. But you know what? Uh, when I was a kid, this would have been science fiction. And even when this sled was built, this would have been pretty impressive. So this is the Ontario snowmobile trails from Track Maps. You know, this little card holds over 30,000 kilometers of snowmobile trails, uh, 20,000 points of interest like clubhouses and restaurants. It's also got uh, 33 snow tours. And the snow tours are really cool, actually. They're pre-planned -pre trips um, on existing snowmobile trails, and they're all planned out by the local districts. So those are pretty cool, too. So I came across the track maps on the OFSC website, and I'll put the address in the description. And that's pretty cool. The OFSC website have all of their trails on an interactive trail guide. So really, really useful for planning your trips. But so is track maps. Now, the thing with track maps is you need a GPS. Now, I had um, this old Garmin GPS, and it's really been sitting in a drawer because typically I use my cell phone uh, for GPS. The trouble with using a cell phone out on the trail is if you don't have cell signal, and there's a lot of places up here where I don't have any cellular, then I, you know, you could still use the GPS feature of the phone, but you can't download mapping, right? So that's why I really kind of want to have a dedicated GPS. So the one thing I'll point out, the Garmin Nuvi really isn't built to be used outside, right? So it's not kind of rubberized. It's not meant for all weather usage. Um, I'm actually ordered a weather cover for it. If you go to the Track Maps website, and I'll put the link in the description, there actually is information on compatibility on, on different units you can use. And just as a side note, <laughs> from a support perspective, Track Maps is a phenomenal company. Any questions that I've had like that, they've answered right away. Now, I wouldn't go so far to say that a GPS in Track Maps is a must have, but I'd say it's a really good idea to have it. I think. You know, you can easily get lost out here. There are thousands of kilometers of trail in the snow. Everything looks the same. So I think it's important to know exactly where you are. And it's important to be able to tell people where you are if you have uh, an accident or you break down. The track maps goes way beyond that, right? It's a really useful tool for planning routes. So, you know, in addition to those self-guided snow tours that I was talking about, uh, you can also plan your own routes ahead of time on the computer. You can stick them on your GPS and you can share them with other riders with you. So really, really useful. All right, so if I want to use track maps, then I want to have a GPS. And if I need to have a GPS, then I need a power supply on the sled. Now, even if you use your cell phone for GPS mapping, then this video is still going to be handy for you because I'm going to talk through adding a 12-volt accessory outlet to your older snowmobile. All right, if you have a newer snowmobile, then it may have come with a GPS, and it may have come with a dedicated 12-volt system. You may have an accessory outlet. On an older snowmobile like this, you don't. And that's a bit of a problem. So if I look at this, this is the charger from that Garmin unit. And if I look at it, it wants, for input uh, 10 to 30 volts DC and that's the problem right because it wants DC so this is an older snowmobile and it doesn't have a battery it doesn't have electric start uh, it generates electricity for the lights and the ignition system with a magneto right so that's a, a stator inside of a flywheel and it generates electricity but it generates AC so in case you didn't know there's two kinds of current there's AC um, like the sled generates with the magneto and it's also the same current that you'd have in your house and then there's DC or direct current um, that's like the current that you have in a battery and that's why electronic devices like the the battery in your GPS or your cell phone need DC current so because the sled generates AC, if we want to wire in an accessory outlet to it, we need to rectify that 12 volt AC or turn it into DC. So this is an outlet with a rectifier on it. The instructions that come with the accessory outlet tell you to wire the, take the yellow wire and wire it to the 12 volt AC on the sled, which is also a yellow wire, and take the brown wire and wire it to the ground on the sled. And it does work that way, I tested it. But the service manual says always wire uh, an accessory into the yellow and the yellow black, which is a lighting coil off of Magneto. So I'm actually gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do what the, the manual says. So I'm not 100% sure, but I think by wiring that into the common ground on the frame of the sled, then we could draw a little bit of voltage off the ignition circuit. 
uh, but it's only like one amp anyway, so probably either way is fine. All right, so in this video, I'm really gonna cover how to wire this thing in. I'm not uh, gonna get into actually mounting the outlet. Uh, I mean, for starters, it's really straightforward, but the other issue is that, you know, this hood is in amazing shape for a sled this old, and I, I'm really kind of struggling with the idea of drilling a hole in it. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just kind of position this outlet down here between the windshield and the hood, and I'm gonna feed the wires. There's a little slot back here where I'm gonna feed the wires through, and I'm gonna mount the GPS using this suction cup mount. Probably eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bracket here that I can mount this on and just attach it to the side of the hood here. So I've decided to draw my 12 volt off of the instrument cluster. So if you look on the back of the instruments, you've got a, a yellow and a yellow black. And again, that's what the service manual says to wire into. And it's going to be close to where I'm going to mount the GPS. Now, if I look down under here, there's a little slot here where I can feed the wires through already. So I don't even have to drill any holes. All right. So I've already removed the mount from the... Uh, the fuel gauge, I think it's going to be easier uh, to work on it from this side. I've pulled my wires through and I've pulled the uh, the black and the red that are coming out of that rectifier. The other thing I've done is crimp a couple of uh, ring terminals on the ends here so that I can connect it properly to the posts. Right, So don't, don't get lazy and just wrap the wires around. We want to get a good connection. You get a lot of vibration when you're running, so we want to make sure that we've uh, got a good connection there. So I've crimped these uh, connectors on. I'm just going to take... So again, the center wire here is the yellow and black, and the uh, the other post is the yellow that we're gonna use. Oh, we'll just go ahead and screw that. So the brown is the one that I'm connecting to the yellow black. And we're gonna use a seven mil deep socket and tighten up the other terminal. And we've just zip tied our wiring up to keep it nice and neat so it doesn't get caught in anything. Okay, so let's wire it in there. And then this in the shrink wrap here is that rectifier. So I know my gauges and my lighting work, so I'm pretty confident that we've got this wired in properly, but I'm just going to go and do a quick test before I uh, plug the GPS in. I don't want to obviously damage anything. I don't want to blow a fuse in the charger. So I'm just going to take my multimeter and stick it on those two wires. All right, so I've got my probes hooked up, red to red and black to black, and I'm going to select DC voltage on this. All right, so we had a nice steady 11 volts at idle, and then it went up a little bit when I revved the sled, so I think uh, we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that accessory outlet now. Things working perfectly. Our GPS is working. We had a green light on the charger. Nothing's smoking. All of our gauges are working perfectly, so I think we're good to go. The only other thing I have left to do is build that bracket um, to mount that outlet onto and come up with something to cover it to keep the weather off of it. So I bought the accessory outlet from a company in the U.S. called Gilliman Innovations. Great guy. I had to call. I had a couple of questions. He was super helpful. They shipped it really quickly. So I'll go ahead and put the website address in the description for the video. So that's the end of part one. Keep watching the channel because now next video I'm going to walk you through using the OFSC interactive trail map on their channel. I'm also going to walk through using track maps on Garmin Basecamp. And that's where track maps really shines because that's where we can go ahead and plan out all those routes in advance. Uh, we can use those snow tours that I talked about before. We can download all of that onto our GPS and we can share it with other people that are riding with us. So really, really handy tool to have and I'll walk you through all that in my next video. Now, if you like this video, I hope you take a second and mash that like button for me. If you subscribe, I try and post new content at least once a week, especially during the winter season. So until next time, I'm Dave Clark. Thanks for watching.